tinfoil hat. Oh, what the fuck are you guys even talking about? Global controls will have to be imposed. And a world governing body will be created to enforce them. Welcome to Tinfoil Hat. We, we, we go deep, homeboy. Eric, open your mind. Drink from the fountain of knowledge. There's lizard people everywhere. That's some interdimensional shit. Wake up, Aaron. This is only the beginning. Dude, you just blew my mind. Are you ready to get your mind blown? Good oh, morning, Swarm, and welcome to Tim Fall Hat. You know I am. You know I'm here to do. I'm here to Rawr. Joining me as always, uh, Xavier Guerrero, and on the ones and two, Jay Nice, Juicy Johnny, Johnny Woodard. Oh, we're some high <laughs> notes right there. Okay, 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 okay. I like that. But now like we're losing it. everybody. Like now that. we're losing everybody. Committed. How come the uh, we got to get the new episode up on uh, samtriplee.com? What happened there, Johnny? Anyways, guys, thanks for tuning in. Uh, I don't see the episode up. Of what? Of Broken the, Sam? Yeah, oh, Tim Full I mean, Hat. Tim Full Hat. I don't know why it's not there. Oh, it's uploaded. That one's uploaded. That's it's crazy. The okay. Jeffrey's one. Yeah, it's up. Okay. All right. Guys, I uh, hope you're doing well. Thanks for tuning in. Uh, we're going to get to it to win it. We are a great podcast with uh, uh, one, uh, a new up and comer in the scene. Uh, sh- uh, my show inspired her to start a podcast. She got a great podcast. Uh, we're very excited to have Julia from Cosmic Peach Podcast, the Cosmic Peach Podcast. Uh, very excited to have her on. And she knocks it out of the park. I thought it was a great episode. She dropped some bombs on us. <laughs> Especially towards the Ooh. end, man. My God. Paradigm shifting. Who knows, man? It's crazy out there. Some crazy stuff going on. So I hope you guys enjoy this episode. Guys, I only have a couple uh, uh, events on my uh, my website. Just go to samtribute.com for all of my live events. Pasadena this Friday, Saturday night, and then the following week, I am in myself and Florence. Xavier Woo-hoo. Guerrero and Eddie Bravo. We're in Torrance at the end of the South Bay. It is a punk rock club. We're doing two shows, and all you got to do is buy one ticket to both shows. We're doing stand-up, and then we're doing our uh, Q&A, which is always fun, fun, fun. Uh, Sam, a lot of new t-shirts Go to tinfoilattshirts.com For all of our new t-shirts uh, Again, guys, uh, we're going to keep this short Okay, Rockfin is where it's at All of us have uh, premium content on there Just on the tinfoil hat Rockfin, okay You get, you guys get The uh, AMAs Okay, that's where I answer questions for an hour You guys get my deep conspiracy rewinds Where we take all these old uh, videos, news articles, all the news uh, uh, videos, and we br- do a deep dive on them. We discuss what we know now, and uh, yeah, we just did a um, what we did. Where is it? We just did the William Kobe Church Committee hearing. That was a great one, and that's a crazy one. So that's available. And then I have an only conspiracies where we do a nice little interview. All that. Three episodes a week, plus Conspiracy Social Club, plus a zero. All that is uh, you get more bang for your buck with Sweet Sammy T's uh, premium content. And, uh, yeah, go to that. Uh, if you want to find us on Rumble, we're there, we're there as well. Check out the latest episode of of Broken Sim. That's out. Uh, consp- uh, Cash Daddy's uh, Patreon is fire we have affiliates we have all sorts of affiliates for you that will give you what you need to survive and thrive okay higher what we have here is high frequency high vibrational people that we're working with wise wolf gold and silver silver uh acura hydrogen brown gas uh harley ray Okay, we that's our, our crystals and candles, and uh, we got our good friend Joel D- Staley and his uh, his way to lose weight. I know it worked for me when I worked it, and then Legal Shield. Uh, if you want to get on our social media, just go to nuke dot social. Uh, we have a Tim Fall Hat uh, Telegram and a Zero Telegram, and then all of my past episodes are in fact available. 
You just got to click it. It will take you to the Apple Podcast. <coughs> and then finally, a 24-hour uh, radio station for all your sweet Sammy T needs. Anything else, guys? Uh, we don't smoke the Saints. Patreon's rocking. We got one more mystery box left for 100 bucks. Trust me. If there's one left, that means it means something. Go get it. We got mystery boxes as well. That's Woo-hoo! about to come out. Bow, 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 bow. All right. New Broken Sim just dropped a uh, day late, uh, but not a dollar short. Many yeah. extra dollars uh, will be had if you listen to the next Broken Sim that just came I out. I think it's you're going to enjoy it. Enjoy this wonderful episode with the Cosmic Peach Podcast. Julia from the Cosmic Peach Podcast. Enjoy. We go deep, homeboy. Eric, <laughs> open your mind. <laughs> All right, let's get into it. Very excited to have this young lady on. I always like to find uh, podcasters that I think have very bright futures and are going to pop. And, you know, she was on my uh, premium content on Rockfin. You just go to rockfin.com slash tinfoil hat and you can see her episode there. And I thought she crushed it. So I'm like, let's bring her on to the big show. So here she is. Please welcome to Tim Fall Hat for the first time, and hopefully many times, Julia from the Cosmic Peach Podcast. How are you? I'm great. I am really excited to be here. Thanks for having me. Uh, my pleasure. So, you know, for those who may not be familiar with your you and your show, can you tell us a little bit about yourself and where our listeners can find you? Yeah, so I cover uh, conspiracy theories, but I also do some paranormal stuff and true crime, but really only if there's a conspiracy involved in the true crime. It's not like crime junkies or something like that. Um, And I also do, you know, cryptids and, and all of that, but my heart is really in conspiracy theories. And that mostly comes from listening to Tinfoil Hat on repeat. <laughs> And uh, I went and saw one of your shows, and I was inspired to start my own podcast. And it's wherever you listen to podcasts on Apple, Spotify, you name it, iHeartRadio. I have a YouTube channel, but I'm kind of selective on what episodes get put on YouTube because I'm already on my second strike. (laughs) Yeah. And, you know, if I give any advice, do whatever you can to stay on there. It is Main Street. So uh, what's very interesting is that you came and saw me live, and I inspired you to do a podcast but not do stand-up comedy, which might be about (laughs) about my comedy, but that's fine. Um, But I'm very happy. I'm putting together a show called I Inspired You to Be a Millionaire, where I get all my friends who I told what to do uh, and how to become millionaires. Come on. Hopefully you'll join that group too. Uh, That was a joke, everybody. Uh, But the point is that... um, I'm very thankful. I always love when people, wherever they are, you know, not not in L.A., not in uh, New York City, start podcasts and uh, put out a great product. And you do have a great product. I, I've seen your work. It's really good. I'm talking to you. You're really thorough. And I hope people check it out. The links for the show are below. And uh, like I said, she's great at her job. Uh, so recently, and you're talking about YouTube fucking with you, uh, yesterday... I experience it's very interesting because uh, whenever we have Mel K on the 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 tech gods br- br- drop the hammers on us okay and uh so uh, we put out I put out conspiracy social club and broken sim on the same day on a Monday and all I was getting was hey I can't download your app on Apple and I can't download your your episodes on um spotify and then it turned out it was a lipson issue tuesday right yeah it was actually an amazon web services there yeah tell tell us about that was well it's just i mean every they all use amazon for to serve their files and they had a big big issue do you think that it is that amazon allows them to upload everything for very low prices meaning they could they are, can store a large amount of data on there like hosting right yeah i mean it's, a, it's i mean that's how they have a business for sure but i don't i don't know is there another option but amazon 
Because yeah, I think, I think like Rockfin Cloud is Flare, on our- Cloudflare is a thing, I think. Uh, there are options, but Amazon's the main the main player. I think Rockfin is on uh, uh, Amazon. And I've talked to them about, hey, man, you got to figure this out. You know? So so it's interesting that they're messing with you and all that stuff on, on YouTube. What, 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 what was your last strike you got? I wasn't like allowed to post anything for 90 days or something because I posted an episode I did on cults, like Heaven's Gate cults and uh, Jim Jones, the big ones. And they thought I was trying to commit suicide, they said, and they were worried about me. That um, is and so they, interesting. They gave me a strike. <laughs> that is so interesting. YouTube yeah. was worried about you. They're like, hey, we're worried about. No, that's you. concern trolling. That that really is that concern really is, trolling. Yeah. <laughs> that really they were is. afraid I was gonna like hop off YouTube and drink the Kool Aid, I guess. And they, for my safety, of course, they um, disabled my ability to post anything. I love yeah, that. It, like, we're worried about what you're posting might make you suicidal, so we're gonna not allow you to post anymore, which will probably make you more suicidal. Yep, there goes all your money. <laughs> right. all, all your money, you, you were already suicidal, now you're broke. Yeah, yeah, right? It's oh, a, that's gonna definitely it's end just well. It's ridiculous. It's just ridiculous. How many teams do you have on right now? You have, the, you have a soccer teams. team and a hockey team. Yeah, dude. You gotta be consistent, right? Am I well, wrong? Well, at least they gotta be in the same city. Or they gotta match. Yeah, but I mean, I would say the same city, at least. So Is that Chicago and LA? Yeah. So we're in the kind of this world right now uh, with, with I think the psyops are so strong right now. It's like psyops on top of psyops. And I know you wanted to get into a little bit of cult with Laurel Canyon, which is one of my favorite topics. I mean, it, it just, everything I think is just not real. I just, I just. I'm almost getting really close to human vibration levels where I'm just like, it's all fake. Everything's fake. And, <laughs> and like, she doesn't, I, I, I don't want to put words in her mouth, but she's very much into things that aren't, they didn't happen. Oh, like she was the, she, remember when she said 9-11 didn't happen? That's yeah, the first time but then she like, brought us articles that said nobody was going to the hospital. They're like, we were expecting a big ru rush and nobody showed up. And she said that the, the building was empty. Yeah. Like, who it, died? It's crazy. So where do you want to start? Well, I can start pretty much in it. So I, I did listen to that episode, by the way, with Human Vibration. And I did do my own John Bonet episode, which is really great. But that's not what we're talking about today. I think that a lot of the things that people think are psyops are to a degree or they're just not as they appear so like a lot of the occult laurel canyon stuff it actually happened and um people were really into the laurel canyon scene and the hippie movement but it was not for peace and love it was actually kind of the exact opposite so i do i think it's interesting how people will like die on the hill oh i love Jim Morrison or whatever. And if you really find out who his family was and what they were up to, you wouldn't actually agree with anything that they stood for. So I think that's kind of an interesting place to start. Well, I, I find that very interesting as well. Like what is real, what is not real. And so, you know, I, the fight I always get in with people is like, oh, like with Jeff Bezos, who I think is a complete... Uh, LARP. Now, does that mean I don't think he's smart or driven? No, that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is he is positioned to present something, which going back to our what started this conversation, which was Amazon. Like, like the hearing that everything is hosted on Am Amazon makes me believe it's more the government than everything. Well, I mean... You don't believe that it started off of him selling books? No, well, I, that's I, how no, it started. It yeah, that's what. Yeah, it's there's like it was a book. But the notion then, he came up with everything, the great no, his grandpa handed him this service that is going to sell stuff on the internet, and they use books to fine tune it so that once they got all the kinks out of how to 
do online sales, not just taking in the orders, but also sending out the orders, how they got that done. Then they opened it to everything. Right? That's my opinion. But, like, are you telling me that the guy whose dad created all these technology, this 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 division of the of the the a government that creates all this new technology just happened to come up with this new technology but on his own and then mm-hmm. right i mean it's like ridiculous yeah and uh are you all familiar with david mcgowan at all dave i know that name who's david mcgowan so he actually wrote the book Strange Scenes from the Canyon about Laurel Canyon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I've kind of expanded on it with my own research, but he got one of those real fast acting CIA type of cancers. Oh. Um, and he died before a lot of uh, discoveries were made with the Laurel Canyon. So... I thought it was great to read the book, but knowing what I know now, it just makes everything make a little bit more sense, if that makes sense. But um, he talks about like August 1964 uh, was the Tonkin Gulf incident, which basically led to the Vietnam War. And the thing about the Vietnam War is what a lot of people talk about in the conspiracy theory community is you need a certain level of bodies for a quote unquote, like a sacrificial type of death to power something up. So in my mind, when I hear about the Tonkin Gulf incident, which is like a totally, like it never really even happened. It wasn't even a false flag. It never happened. It was like a bullshit story that they came up with just so they could um, start a war pretty much. And like millions of Southeast Asian people and like 50,000 American kids like fresh out of high school died a horrific, gruesome deaths because of this um, war. And what was happening at the same time in the nation is like this hippie movement is rising out of nowhere. So was this kind of like the sacrificial right to bring in this new era of music and culture. I think so, but it's just just my opinion. That's really interesting. That's a, that's a super deep, deep. Now that is as a deep occult conspiracy as you will get. Like that there was a sacrifice it's almost like they're in f- five steps ahead of everything. They create this to create this to create this to create that, right? They create mm-hmm. so they they fake a Gulf Tonkin uh, attack in order to go into Vietnam, and to go into Vietnam that helps two things: the military industrial complex. But really, what nobody uh, talks about is that the the uh, the Golden Triangle of poppy fields, which is the real reason we went into Vietnam. Where have we mm-hmm. heard that before? Afghanistan. That's exactly why we go went to Afghanistan. That's exactly why we went to Vietnam. And they made it about communism, right? Because, you know, and, that, and just like how they all, oh, these people attacked us on uh, 9-11, even though it was the, all the, all the hijackers were Saudi, even if that story's, I don't believe, I, I, that, I'm almost all out on the 19 hijackers, by the way. I'm almost, I'm almost all out on that. So that, drone, that, so all the way drone? Uh, uh, drones at the least for me. Drones at the least. What C- CGI? Well, I mean, we, I mean, people. We know people who saw it, right? Don't we? No, we know people who saw. It, so I'm like drones. Yeah. Drones that look like planes. That's mm-hmm. what I'm thinking. Certainly possible. So, yeah. so, but then you're adding the level that now they use the Vietnam War to usher in this new kind of, uh, um, let's get. I mean, like, let's let's. Let's call what it is, Luciferianism. It really was, Sam, because you're taking the 1950s, and I'm a huge fan of the 50s, but you're taking stuff like Buddy Holly, who also died horrifically in a plane crash, but you're taking people like Buddy Holly and Richie Valens and like all the music from the 1950s that was more like 
Wholesome. loving and 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 wholesome yeah and even when you went to like a school dance or something in the 50s you had to maintain a certain distance from them and you move into the 60s and out of nowhere you're getting like if you can't be with the one you want be with the one you're with everybody take birth control and fuck your brains out because yes. that's essentially what the 60s ushered in and um, the so-called hippies that were leading the movement, all of their fathers were high-level military. Yes, and yeah. like, so we're talking about the the um, Tonkin Golf incident. Well, that was led by Jim Morrison's father. Yeah, and you know it's so interesting because you know we're about to get into a deep dive with uh, uh, Ferguson from White Lotus of Light. And he's coming on right after you. And he's very much into that there's a difference between Luciferians and Malachians. And this kind of gets into like a little bit of both in that, you know, the the death of so many people in Vietnam is very Malachian. The death and the destruction, the spraying of chemicals, the Agent Orange, all that stuff is very at the at the spectrum of of light to evil to darkness, right? This is the darkest, right? And then mm -hmm. you get kind of death cult. It's kind a of. death cult, and then you got kind of more in, which is the free will side of it, right? Which is the hippie movement. So it's like this is mm -hmm. kind of like two two uh, like. Kind of them working together in a weird way, right? And then they well, it is weird too because so all these musicians and singers and songwriters are flocking to the Laurel Canyon, like um, Crosby, Stills, and Nash, and the Mamas and the Papas, which I love all of them, and Frank Zappa, the Birds, they're all flocking to this Laurel Canyon area, right? And they're railing against the government and like just let us be free and peace and love. But they never once ever mentioned that all of their fathers were high level military, that they grew up on military, so um, right. like industrial complex. I mean, like Frank Zappa's dad, I have in my notes here, so I wouldn't forget. He was the head of warfare and MK Ultra operations at the Edgewood Arsenal facility. So what what was he really railing against, but never mentioned one time who his father was? It's so crazy, right? It's mm -hmm. so crazy. Now, what, why do you think they use military brats? I think they start them young, kind of like this is who you're going to be. This is our family. Because, I mean, even... Like Frank Zappa, he grows up and he marries this lady named Adelaide Slopeman, who changed her name to Gail Zappa. But her father and all of the fathers before that were um, military captains. So it's not like they even kind of just met and fell in love and decided to change the world with peace and love and music. No, their families probably knew each other, just like John Phillips and Jackson Brown and all of those other uh, hippies, quote unquote, they married military people and um, they come from military backgrounds. Guys, real quick, I want to tell you about our friends at Manscaped. <laughs> That's right. It's a smooth sack summer. Now the fur is gone. Smooth sack summer. Yeah, not the fur is gone. That's right. <laughs> When you're playing in the summer sun, make sure you scaped it from the pubes to the bum, okay? That's right, this summer, to keep your balls cool while you're still looking hot with Manscaped. The leaders in below-the-waist grooming are making sure we all have a ball this summer by giving our pants partners everything they need to stay fresh. Dive headfirst into smooth sack summer. Now it's gone. Talking about a smooth sack uh. summer by going to manscaped.com for 20% off plus free shipping with our code TINFOIL. Have you ever nicked your balls while yeah, manscaping, yeah, yeah, Sam? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's the worst, right? Well, yeah, it's the worst. You know, XG was telling me about that he almost took a machete to his nuts one time. Oh, he I, was I ended bleeding up at, out. I ended up at the, at the ER. Yeah. Dude, he tried to give himself mouth-to-mouth, -mouth and he couldn't. <laughs> he was about to die. 
<laughs> He's not to give himself mock. That will never happen to you with Manscaped. The Manscaped Performance Package 4.0 has everything you need to prepare that summer bod. They have built the ultimate grooming bundle for your summer grooming. Their Lawnmower 4.0 trimmer features a cutting edge ceramic blade to reduce grooming accidents thanks to their advanced skin safe technology. If only XG had had this. The Lawnmower 4.0 has a 7,000 RPM motor, a new Damn. multifunction on off switch that can engage a travel lock, and gives you the ability to turn the 4,000K LED spotlight on and off when needed for a more precise shape. Yeah, dude, you can make a rave on your nuts. That's what they're talking about. No, you need you need it when you're going back door. You know, you're going around the back. You need the lights. Yeah, I do, and I I like to flash out and go. What was it? What the guests say today? The deeper you dig, the darker it gets. Yeah, that's so true, bro. That's so true. Did I mention this trimmer is waterproof too? Beach, lake, or shower, this razor will devour even the strongest pubes. Manscaped even threw in two free gifts to their Performance Package 4.0, the Manscaped Boxer and Shed Travel Bag, okay? Wow. Get 20% off plus free shipping with the code TINFOIL at manscaped.com. That's 20% off plus free shipping with the code TINFOIL at manscaped.com. It's a smooth sex summer, boys. Get on board and or get left behind. And if you do get left behind, you can shave that behind down too with your <laughs> manscaped.com. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it's very interesting because like you, you you study like why why do they position these people? And it's really about they have to get people in that are credible enough for the for the movement that they want to co-op for them to accept that person in, right? Mhm. Right. Do you guys remember the beginning of the first Terminator movie? Where, where there's an, it's like in the future, they're underground and there's a knock on the door and they're like, Hey, I don't know. It's like, Oh yeah, man, let him in. And he walks in and then one dog barks and they realize they let a Terminator in. That's kind of what they do. Like you have to look like them. You have to act like them, but you aren't them. You're actually delivering the virus or, or you're, you're there to co-op the movement into a certain direction. Now, not a not a big, like, grab the steering wheel and turn it like that chick said Trump did. Remember that? Like, yeah. she said, like, yeah. Uh, yeah, that 75-year-old fat ass got up and grabbed the steering wheel, so yeah. right? But not like that. But, like, enough just a little, like, if you're going here, they want you to just a little bit the other way, right? Yeah, because 10 years down the line, that little angle ends yeah. up you're completely... 100 percent in a different place. So, but they don't know they're part of the psyop, right? Uh no, they absolutely know that they are because if you think about it, none of them were homeless or like indigent at any point. They're getting fame and money and their names will be remembered forever. Like who wouldn't want that? And they kind of glamorize this role for them. Like your dad's gonna say, Hey, Jim, um, we're going to give you boatloads of cash and endless pussy for the rest of your life. And no <laughs> one will ever forget you. And you'll live down through uh, the sands of time. And all you have to do is jack off on stage every once in a while. Like, why would you turn that down? Like, for me, if that's how I grew up, and I'm not saying I'm a Luciferian or anything, I'd be like, Fuck yes. Anything I can do so I don't have to punch a fucking clock every day. You know day. what? A great example of what you're talking about and you and that they know what they're perpetrating is Ashley Simpson, right? Or Millie mm-hmm. Vanilli, where like they presented at themselves as these amazing singers fully knowing that they were lip syncing everything they were doing. Right when mm-hmm. Ashley Simpson, oh, dude, that ended to, her career. Ended that, her. Oh, career. it ended her career. So sad. It was, I mean, it was like, but it, so, she was a mocking stock. She, there, she was mean before memes were a thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was done before. I mean, and then she, didn't she go somewhere in Oklahoma and try to sing the national anthem? Yeah. And they booed her like the entire stadium. And then she's like, <laughs> wrap it up, <laughs> wrap it up. But, but if and, and Millie Vanilli. I mean, it's so hilarious because 
somebody memed this really earlier was like, how many of these TikTok people are just lip syncing songs and they're becoming famous off it? And and like everyone's like, we owe Millie Vanilli an apology, but they completely, you know, they presented themselves as legitimate stars. Like the one that I know, if if it is true that they know that they're psyops, is uh, Dr. Dre. Because Dr. Dre, there's a picture of him. He went to like a private school. Yeah. And all this. Why would you pick a private school? And then the Easy E calls him out. He's like, "Hey, you're a private school. You're not part of the crew," type of thing. And there's and then he puts a picture of fucking Dr. Dre and this like looking kind of feminine. And it's that thing like, how, why would you pick someone in a 100%. private school? One hundred percent. That's exactly, dude. Dude, NWA as great as they are, and they are great. When you hear some NWA, man, it's just like. Let's fucking go to war, bro. Yeah. And it is 100% CIA, FBI propaganda. Mm-hmm. 100%. It, I agree with you. I definitely agree with you. But I mean, like, they still to some degree practice what their parents kind of raised them with. Because even after... Um, John Phillips from the Mamas and the Papas, he marries like this military um, girl. I don't know. I think her, I think somehow, oh yeah, that's right. Susie Adams. So her great, great grandpa was President John Adams. And so he marries like this very aristocratic uh, young lady. And um, John Phillips actually engages in a 10 year incestuous relationship with his, their oldest daughter, Mackenzie. So you get the, I don't even know what to call it. I guess Luciferian, incestuous, just disgusting. And like the daughter, Mackenzie, she said, um, like John Phillips would let guys just come into the house and take turns on her and Mick Jagger and like whoever was interested. So that's his own flesh and blood. If you are willing to sell out your own flesh and blood, you are capable of anything. Yeah, I, I completely agree with that. And it's just, it's, it's insane how dark these people get. It's insane mm -hmm. to me. Mackenzie Phillips is everything she says is horrifying. I mean, it, yeah, it's some uh, some of the worst, some of the worst reading is reading Mackenzie Phillips quotes about her time with Papa John. And didn't she go on to do like a television show? She, I mean, she, she was in a movie. Um, she was in a movie called American Graffiti, which was one of my favorite movies as a kid. Um, but she wasn't like a vision of beauty or anything. She kind of had like a Boyish. girl next yeah. door yeah. type of vibe. But I mean. God bless her for being able to come forward and share everything that she has about what happened to her. Oh yeah, Mackenzie Phillips was also on a a famous uh television show. Like uh what was the show called? Hold on. American Graffiti. She was also on something. Yeah, I remember when her story started coming out. One day She was on Oprah. One day at a time. There we go. Yeah. I knew she was on a famous show. Yeah, and like her stories when she came out, you're like, uh, and it's so interesting because she she came out, and I even to me, I, I remember thinking like, man, this short story should be way bigger, and nobody's talking about it. No, no nobody. Yeah, and it's like this is the this is the beginning of the cover up of Hollywood mm -hmm. of of protecting this pedal wood shit that's going on. And, I mean, this is the earliest stages of it. Do you, I mean, I don't know if we're going to get into it, but do you think that Ford Doc thing that Mel Gibson's talking about, you think it's going to go into these years? Well, I haven't seen Mel Gibson actually say he's doing it. I've seen people say he's doing yeah. it. Yeah. So, oh, I'll, we'll wait and see. I mean, I hope he does. I hope he does. But the question gets like, okay, makes his doc. Who? Where is he going to put it? Like, release who's? It? where are they going to release it? I mean, he said that, I mean, YouTube video said that when they released all that, him saying those those anti-Semitic stuff, that that's when he was going to first release it. And that's when they calmed him down. And that now that the Internet's out, he has the right to, like, 
you know, speak his mind and stuff, but I don't know. I mean, I hope so, dude. He's been right about a lot of shit. I think he could sell it direct to consumer. I mean, people would pay for that. There's a bunch of places that would do it, but again, you know, it's like we were talking about whether, like, Joe Rogan's going to re-up with Spotify or not. Like, I hope he does. But everyone's like, he should just go off on his own. I'm like, I don't know, man, because now they got you at point of entry. Like, you need a giant tech person to fight for you. Yeah. Because if you don't, good luck. Also, you're you're the one getting sued then, you know, inside yeah. the company. Yeah. But it's like, look at Alex Jones, as big as Alex Jones is, like InfoWars is a whole we've been to his to his studio. It's it's a lot of work. Yeah, yeah, he's but like it's also like like he's nowhere but InfoWars. Yeah. Like you know, it's like is is that what Joe wants? I don't think Joe would want that. I think Joe enjoys being in the mainstream. So it's like I, he, if he doesn't do Spotify, which I think Spotify will do it, but if they don't, I mean, where's he gonna go? Apple? Well, you saw that YouTube's not doing uh, political strikes no more, at least for now. Really? All political strikes or something like that? Yeah, they're not doing some strikes. They well, they went, she just said she got dinged on some shit. No, I think like last week or something. They they cooled down on some strikes. No, they like, cooled down on that. That you said the if you said the election was rigged. Yeah, that. Yeah, something something political where they they said they were gonna just let it slide now. Which is really interesting, because you're like, why are they doing that? And for now, that's what I say. For now, because when the election comes back up, I'm sure they're gonna stop. I I'm think gonna... they're gonna throw Joe Biden under the bus, and that's just l- releasing the krakens. <laughs> you don't think he's gonna run? I think they're gonna try their hardest to get. I don't think they have both Trump else. and Biden out. <laughs> they don't even want like... either of them. That their goal is not to have they, either I mean, of them run. Foolish if they abandon the advantage of a sitting president campaigning. I mean, that's it's the it's so hard to beat an incumbent He's so president. So old though. Yeah, I mean, this is if yeah. Ever, we all they, want they four else. more years of the creepy guy from Poltergeist too. <laughs> <laughs> so so he yeah. does look like him. You're so right. Wow. Yeah, that yeah, guy's yeah scared the sure. shit out of me, dude. That guy's scared. Was that the Mary uh, Marianne come to the light? No, Marianne? no, yeah, but this is the second one where that old man remember he, remember him like walking up the sidewalk. Yeah, Hi, young lady. Yeah, can I come in? Yeah, oh, <laughs> that gives me the chills. She is, cr- yeah. So you have all these people, uh, and like I really go back to like again. Let's get to Vietnam. We have um, we have all this social strife going on, and just like today. Like, it's so obvious today. It's so obvious today. But, like, then it wasn't. They're all controlled. All of them. Mm -hmm. They're either a CIA asset or an FBI asset. And it's so crazy because they're, like, the founders of movements. Yeah. Yeah, and on that point, actually talking about a founder of a movement in modern-day times, um. Frank Zappa had this log cabin of sorts, which was kind of like a little mansion uh, tucked away in the hills. And he actually had like Charlie Manson living with him. And there's rumors that there's all these like tunnels and caves that were dug in underneath the log cabin. And um, Lady Gaga actually owned it for a while. And I think Jared Leto owns it now. Oh, the one at the top, the big. Uh, yeah, yeah, dude. I know somebody who worked for him. Yeah, up there. And yeah, it's a, it's a weird place, dude. That guy's in some. Everything's weird about that guy. Yeah, he's strange, man. When you see him live in concert, he wants you to believe he's Jesus. He looks like oh, gay yeah. Jesus. I mean, his little sleepaway camp where he has all those people come out and he dresses like the Messiah. It's it's bizarre. He's bizarre, dude. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's crazy. And think about him owning that. Like, what was the significance to him to want to own something like that? And he keeps popping the fuck up on my YouTube every single time. Like, I could just type in something really random. Uh, and there's Jared Leto. <laughs> and it's nothing to do with Morbius. It's just him looking like a Nephilim or something with angel wings and... It's just really creepy and cryptic, and I think there is a reason for sure why he wants to live in the log cabin. It's it's interesting, man, because you go through all these people, led all these movements, and 
Uh, they're all CIA, FBI assets. and But they're still revered. That's the weirdest thing to me, is that they're all still revered. Like, it's the music. I mean, it's the music. But, but it's also like, look at Jesse Jackson and Al Sharpton. They have been outed as FBI assets. They are FBI informants. Yeah. Jesse Jackson admits he was the one that got Martin Luther King to the hotel. And that in court, him and the other guy admit they stepped to the side so they could get a be- an open shot. And you're still a civil rights leader. I mean, and to, not, and to bring up NW, uh, to bring up more like NWA, Snoop Dogg has a murder case that he got away with. Yeah, that's the one that... And now he plays ball perfectly ball? Yeah, I got some thoughts on that, too. Yeah. I'll get into that a little later, because I kind of want to talk about this Laurel Canyon thing, but also kind of look at some of the more modern versions of it as well. I mean, The most I- modern version that I can think of besides, like, Lady Gaga would be what happened... With 90s grunge and like uh, oh, Nirvana, yeah. Nirvana and the Grateful Dead and Courtney Love. That is a more modern Laurel Canyon 2.0. Well, we know, I mean, because, you know, we're talking about what's her name, uh, Mackenzie Phillips and what was done to her. The only saving grace that Courtney Love has in my opinion is that she was so traumatized as a child like she was so traumatized like what her dad allowed to be done to her is unforgivable and uh, and, and this piece of shit is writing books throwing her under the f- under the uh bus i mean you go fuck yourself you scumbag you know, like he he put her in a mental facility. They openly admit they ran MK Ultra on her, and then they they sexually abused her. Mm-hmm. And you think they sent her to to Kurt? Well, I'll do. We'll get into yeah. that. I think that's a, well, so. What's your thoughts on Courtney Love? Well, I think that um, she endured a lot of horrific trauma, but she was also given like specific jobs passing out like lsd and da 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 da. i'm sure that in a way she's controlled but she would be the equivalent of like 1960s what happened to marilyn monroe but marilyn monroe was going a little bit too public like with the kennedys which i think actually led to her demise but courtney has been really good about keeping certain things under wraps and that's what you have to do to survive or else you'll get suicided but she was like the sex kitten the mk ultra like project monarch type of um figure courtney love well, you know, it's like uh, she was uh, underage, sent to a mental facility. The the they ran experiments on her, sexually abused her, then used her as an underage prostitute uh, on missions. Mm-hmm. Right? I mean, now where have we heard this before? Dun, dun. Where have we heard this? M- Barack Obama's mother. Barack Obama's mother was turned out by Barack Obama's grandfather. He turned his own daughter into a MK Ultra sex kitten, and he she he sent her in. Like Barack Obama's mom was an OnlyFans model before there was OnlyFans. <laughs> she was taking pictures of herself, sending naked pictures to everybody. And you know how hard that was back in the day. You had to put in a letter, a mail it. <laughs> yeah, the no f- shit. Well, think about it. you had to get the film developed by somebody. Yeah, you had yeah. to, take so it you to, had to find out one guy that could keep a secret. Yeah, really. He's like, one for you, one for me. Keep it cool. <laughs> Don't tell anybody. Do you think uh, Ghislaine Maxwell was MK Ultra? Now that you got me thinking on that, I mean, yeah, for sure. That whole yeah, and she was the only attractive sister of that group. Yeah, she was the front person. They, the other ones worked be, from behind the scenes as administrators. But but back to Barack Obama's mom. Yeah, he he used to he, Barack Obama's grandpa sent his mother in on on fucking missions to corrupt individuals that they wanted to get control of. She's slinging ass. His own mm-hmm. daughter, right? Oh, dude. Well, you saw the hundred the hundred Biden shit. You think she's in there? Who? 
Oh, the Obama, one of the Obama's daughters. Oh, you saw that pictures? Yeah. yeah. I wouldn't doubt it. But that's not, but but that's something yeah. different. But you know, the using this is what they do. They use their kids as because they're all psychopaths. Right? You'd have to be a psychopath to, to use hurt your, your own kid. Children. Yeah, yeah, it's like unbelievable to me that anybody would find that in any way acceptable. Your whole job is to protect your children. It backs up this idea that maybe they're not human. Damn. Boom, boom, boom. I think it's actually interesting, too, um, because you said they're all psychopaths. And, like, another thing that David McGowan talks about a lot is he wrote another book that was called Program to Kill. And he talks about how, like, all the most epic serial killers of all time were all in the military. So you wonder why they're so publicized like Jeffrey Dahmer. They won't stop making Jeffrey Dahmer documentaries. Yes. And it's like, why? Because he was homegrown. All of them, Ted Bundy, Jeffrey Dahmer, John Wayne Gacy, they were all BTK military men. You're totally right about that. It's like unbelievable to me. And then they mm -hmm. release them. Uh, in the, it's it's like if you come to understand that everything's about uh, just uh, just initiating trauma to raise anxiety, it all starts to make sense. Guys, we're excited to tell you about one of our new sponsors and our friend, Delete Me. Listen, if you're living in 2023, you're on the internet. Your data is available everywhere, and it sucks, okay? I don't know about you guys, but I had somebody once try to uh, take out a loan. A loan? In Orange County uh, uh, using my info. No kidding. Yeah. You should have had Delete Me. I, I, if I had Delete Me, I wouldn't have to worry about it, okay? Delete Me protects your data from data brokers. It's just that simple. What you do is you submit your personal information for removal from search engines. Delete Me, Delete Me's experts find and remove your personal information. You receive a detailed report in seven days, and we remove your personal information every three months that's how they do it just that simple just make it happen okay i'm tired of it i'm tired of it man i'm tired of people using my picture to make fake profiles i'm tired nobody's actually doing that but you know the point is i'm really tired of it i'm tired of being vulnerable on the internet all right, I'm tired of Dude, it. Dude, and the the report is a cool thing it literally tells you where they took you out of like where like oh they took you out of like 300 websites yeah so listen, your data is being sold online by data brokers. You have the right to stay private and protect your personal data, okay? There's a threat of being doxxed, harassed, attacked, okay? Oh. Protecting yourself from your identity theft and phishing scams. It's it, This is what Delete Me does, and they're the best at it. So if you want 20... 20% off for all consumer plans. Just go to joindeleteme.com slash tin foil. That's joindeleteme.com slash tin foil. Again, it's like when we had Jimmy Doron or Whitney Webb, and I'm like, do you, uh, you know, when you get the like, kind, not the black pill, but I wouldn't say Jimmy Dore's a black pill. I think Whitney Webb is a black pill. And I don't mean that with any disrespect because she's the best at what she does. I'm just saying I think that's her perspective. It's very cut and dry. The end is near, right? Oh, yeah. She left the country. Where is she? Argentina South, South, South Africa. Like that? So, yeah. It's, no. I'm just kidding. Argentina. <laughs> yeah. You don't run to an apartheid state. Um, but she, uh, you know, they, they, everything is data, right? It's all data. And I go, well, you can have all this data, but it doesn't make any sense if you're just looking at they want more money and power. Like, it's really spirit. When you when you look at it from a spiritual point of view, a Malachian point of view, it all makes sense. All of it makes sense. Why would you want depopulation if you want more money and power? It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any sense. Yeah, it makes no sense. And it's just like to release all of these. I mean, when you hear stories about Jeffrey Dahmer called the White House and got on, like, who did he talk to? Like the vice president or something like that? You're like, how is this motherfucker just dialing up the White House? Yeah, and, and it's like with the, um, 
like with the media and stuff too, because I think someone told me whoever owns Netflix is a dirt bag, like way high up with some type of connection to someone. But so like, I know what it is. If you want to know. um, Yeah. What is it? It is the, the, the guy, he is, uh, he is the nephew of the man who invented propaganda. Uh huh. Right. Reed okay, Hastings so or the other guy? The other one. The other one. Mark Randolph. Is that no, who was the guy like um, who invented? No, no. I mean, who's which? Which Netflix guy are you talking about? Oh, uh, I'm Hastings? not sure which one. I mean, like, look what they put out on Netflix that are like Netflix originals. Like, they're starting to get pretty disturbing at this point, and. My thing is, like, you don't actually have to be a Jeffrey Dahmer victim to become traumatized by something that you watch. So when you watch that documentary, it's horrific. I mean, it's nauseating. And they've got you by watching it. You are now traumatized because your brain can't tell the difference between something happening to you in real life and something that you watch on the screen, which is why, in my opinion, like in Disney cartoons, they always kill off the parents. And it's almost to traumatize the child because the child's brain cannot determine what's reality and what's just fictitious stuff happening in a movie. So they are getting you psychologically they don't even have to touch you physically to fuck you for life. I completely and utterly agree. I completely 100% utterly agree. Now just imagine if you go into the metaverse. Now they can trauma now you're like you you think it's real life and now they're traumatizing. Bang 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 bang. And again, I've talked about this before. You know, we've had guests on uh, uh on Zero, she was talking about how she was uh, how we're the only the only mammals that stay in fight and flight all the time. Nobody else does that. No other animal is constantly in a state of fear for its life, like like the human beings through through this all this bullshit, through all this um, trauma that they're doing. So why do you think birth rates are going down? Well, because people, it's very females don't want to have. Children when they're on the move constantly, you know, Mm. I mean, just think about what that means, dude. What like, oh yeah, it's uh, Lindsay Eastburn talked about this, about how uh, uh, humans are always in trauma. And that's why I just think about that. But it's also like, think about how, how addicted to trauma we are. Like, there's mm-hmm. this story, this woman in South Korea just went on and killed somebody because she loved crime podcasts. Oh, I saw that. Unbelievable. <laughs> oh, wow. Right? Like that. I mean, just think about what that means, too, because, like, how many times have we have heard the left talk about, oh, these jokes are going to lead to, like, people goose-stepping and, and and being racist, and here you are, and, but they all listen to crime podcasts. All those people listen to crime podcasts. But the government must know that one in how many are going to act like that. What do you mean? Go and do a crime because they hear a crime podcast. The government must yeah, know the, that? Yeah, the government or like whoever, like they they must know that one in out of how many people well, are going to act mean, like as a serial killer. Well, I mean, like the question is, or a mass cho- why, or a- why? Johnny says this all the time, where he's like, I don't even follow this web, this Twitter, and they're just bombarding me. With fight videos and trauma videos. And yes, I do have a street fight show that I, I enjoy watching street fights. But you're like, uh, like Johnny was talking about on Broken Sim, about there's this video of this woman got hit by a bus. Horrible. I mean, so I mean, graphic. It's so traumatizing. Not- I saw that. I saw that. Everybody saw that video and nobody follows that account somehow. Right. Yeah. Well, and it, now it's it, everywhere. Who wants to see a Why teacher get that? obliterated by a bus? Nobody. Why is that? Well, because they want you to be traumatized. The news wants you to be traumatized. The news wants you to be scared. You're, yeah. easy, you're easier to lead, easier to be misled when you're in that state, too. You know? Like the way they got people. Like, think about this, man, when you watch the news, right? Um, we've said this before. Why don't they ever show you bank robberies? Ever. They never show you bank robbers. Why? They don't want you to do it. Because they don't want you to get the idea I might rob a bank. 
The last one they did was in the one in L.A., remember that shootout? Yeah, that was like in the 90s or something like that, or forever ago. That North Hollywood shootout? Yeah. That? Yeah. Oh, yeah, that was the last time. But that was such, that was so big. That was like fucking Gotham City big, right? Like something you'd see in the fucking a Batman movie, right? Well, I think it, I mean, wasn't didn't that inspire like Heat or something like that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so, so they don't want you to do it, so they don't show you it. Now, think about what they do with these school shootings. All they do is show you sh- school shootings over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. Why is that? Because. The more school shootings there are, the more people will demand gun restrictions. Do you see anybody right now? Dude, right now Europe is going through a fucking stab. People Canada, are getting stabbed. too. Canada. People are getting stabbed. Is anyone calling for stricter knife control? They have that problem in Asia, too. Japan, a lot of stabbings. China. People think, like, oh, they're going to stop dying. No, people are going to go around stabbing everybody, too. Are you just going to make dull knives? What are you going to make? Just I mean, think about prisons. Knives. Prisons. There, there are no fewer guns anywhere in the world than in jail. And people, it's one of the most violent places on the planet. People 100%. find ways to kill each other, even though 100%. they're not even allowed to have sharp, sharp objects. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People are going to kill each other. You know, Sam, something you said earlier about uh, the fight or flight thing. I actually interviewed a holistic OBGYN. Um, his name is Dr. Nathan Riley. And if you're female... Uh, you should listen to the podcast point blank. Like he says everything that you need to know about home birth. And he said the reason why cesareans are on the rise and no one gives birth at home or no one gives birth naturally anymore is because just like in the wild, if you go into labor, but you're in fight or flight mode, your bodily, your bodily functions shut down and your labor stops until you can get cozy and comfortable somewhere in a protected environment. And when women go into the hospital, they're getting jabbed with shit. The doctors are being mean to them. The nurses aren't listening to them and it's cold in there. There's nothing cozy or comforting going on. And the epidural kind of like fucks you up for life. And you're wondering why you felt raped in your labor. And it's because your body was actually in fight or flight mode the entire time. And they're forcefully removing the child or they're cutting you open and just tearing it out. So you tell me like that's not the most barbaric shit you've ever heard. Yeah. I mean, the whole thing of how how you lay down when you give birth, it's all the opposite of what you're supposed to do. It's all the opposite. And people have, uh, you know, we see it a lot, man. We just see what is being sold to us is the is seen as the a more civilized version of it. But what people don't understand is, like, you have to really take a look at why is it being promoted to you? Who is promoting it? And why are they promoting it? And what do they get out of it? And it's usually, again, Either money or you go deeper. It's this Malachian fucking darkness, dude. You know, it just makes no sense whatsoever why they do it because it's about trauma bringing you into the world, traumatizing you, traumatizing the, the, uh, everybody. I forget the name of the, the, the book, but it was a book about this guy that comes from the future. He goes to the past and everybody's idiots and, uh, they would do something where they would tell people that they were going on a flight. Everyone would be like, oh, she's going to this amazing place. She's flying off to be. And they were really all being doing population control and they would die. I forget the name of the book. But in the book, they were talking about how mo- they did want people having kids. So they made movies about how traumatizing childbirth was. Ooh. So people would stop having children. And Damn. Then, and then you kind of watch how our what is being done in our, our, our pop what is being done and what is being pushed in our pop culture on women. What is being pushed on men. And you see it's all about getting them not to have children. That's what it's all about. Which, or they're like chemically castrated and they don't realize it. I have actually been doing a lot of research into the Gardasil 
It was like a three part uh, turkey baster that you could get in like the sixth grade. And I got it. It was a three part thing. I didn't have any choice in it. My mom decided that's what I was going to have. So that's what I had. And they tell me all the time that like my parts don't work. Like they don't understand why and da da da. And then I'll randomly see this study on, um, like Facebook or Instagram saying, if you've been Gardasil vaccine injured, call this number. Are you sterile? Can you no longer? Oh my and it's God. like, isn't that for um, the, isn't that for the HPV? HPV. Yeah. Gardasil and the HPV vaccine were used in the prevention of certain strains of the human papilloma Oh my virus. God. And they give it to you in high school. That's you know that's the, they that's the virus in they sixth say grade. causes uh, throat cancer for men. You know, people anybody who goes down. Uh, you know, uh, that's what they say. Gave Michael lady, Douglas. Johnny? Yeah, yeah. Gave Michael Douglas. Well, you know uh, also that in. Michael Douglas came out that right after he did Liberace. So he's like, dude, I'm eating so yeah, much. That's so ass, funny, bro. I'm eating so much snatch. That's so I, got, I got I got snatch cancer in my throat. <laughs> That's, That's literally what he did right there. It was like unbelievable. Yeah, he had to get his man card back. That's yeah, so it's like, dude, try, that was just a roll. I, that, <laughs> I'm the exact opposite of that. So I'm a, I'm a, I'm in a, I mean, so much women. I'm just getting women cancer in my throat. And, <laughs> and, uh, but this is crazy. This is crazy. It's horrible. I think that the, uh, I don't want to like. Um, I'll just talk in code, just in case. But I think the. But you know, um, this doesn't go on YouTube, right? Okay, good. So, like the <laughs> COVID uh, turkey basters are almost kind of like a double dose for those who have already been like Gardasil vaccine injured, or um, maybe they didn't get Gardasil, but now they can get you with the COVID jab. And this is my opinion. I'm not a doctor or anything like that. But in my opinion, if you didn't get it like in sixth grade or high school or whenever it was that they were passing them out, for me, I think it was like 2000 or 2001. Um, they can get you now with the uh, COVID vaccine and in, in maybe in like 10 years, 15 years, Girls will be my age and wondering why they can't have children. And that's probably why. It's just unbelievable to me, dude. It's just unbelievable. And this is it. And it's just people. People are just so brainwashed by science. That they're okay with this. And it blows me away. And what's really bad is that, so, that, that you can't sue any of these people. And what you have to do is you you go to this f vaccine court that all these companies put money into, and that's how you get your money. You don't actually, it's, it's unbelievable to me. That they found, like, this little, like, scapegoat thing to say to women now which I find really interesting. Uh, they'll say you have PCOS and it's nothing to do with the vaccinations. Um, so it's like, you can't even prove that you were like Gardasil vaccine injured because your doctor has now come up with a diagnosis for you, which is PCOS, which is going through the roof it's skyrocketing women are being diagnosed with pcos like it's nothing and this is their safety net so they don't have to explain why your body isn't functioning properly it's so crazy to me it is so crazy to me all right it says it's yeah it says the exact cause of p COS is, isn't known. Factors might might play role, include, and then just a bunch of stuff that doesn't say the vaccine. Yeah, they say uh, it's unknown. That's just how God made you. And that is verbatim what my doctor told me. He said, that's just how God made you. And I said, he didn't make any of the other females in my family this way. So I'm just highly confused by that statement. Well, it's funny. One of the causes <laughs> there is low-grade inflammation, which is well known to be a side effect of 
any vaccine is low grade inflammation. I well, I think when you look at autism, that is a big part of it. Inflammation. I think mm-hmm. it's a major. I think. I mean, I think people are starting to wake up, bro, to what this is going on, and you know, you have a lot of mothers out there that are very like watch the news, get scared. You know, they're like, I got to I got to die. And they rush and they shoot this stuff into their kids. And it's just like, I don't know, man. Uh, California's fucking nuts, dude. It's just nuts. It's just nuts. So back to what are we originally talking about? Because I get lost on the, I'm all over the place. But I love a good side tirade. No, they're, you're the best. The you're best. so funny. You're so funny. Um, So, so. You know, so we got the 60s and it's just all controlled opposition. It's all like uh, informants and assets being placed to take over. Uh, and then what happened? So so you're like, well, well, how did I get them to take over? Very simple. How do you do that? You, you, you have them infiltrate the group, right? Mm-hmm. And th- so like, let's get into like, how does NASA form? Well, they send L. Ron Hubbard in. To infiltrate Jack Parsons' inner circle of these like fucking Satan worshippers, okay? And Walt Disney. And well, they get them, and then they come together and they create NASA, right? That's a, that, like a, they like if we see with the Whitmore uh, uh, a kidnap case, these assets push people in certain directions, okay? So now not only are you getting pushed in a certain direction, but these people who are pushing you are having all these resources available to them to make this thing happen. Okay. So now you go like into like 60s pop culture and you have all the Gloria Steinem. Is that her name? Her Gloria name? Steinem, yeah. Steinem. She's like getting infiltrate she's infiltrating this movement and being the leader. And how do you how do you create her as leader? You get her interviewed on all the biggest shows. We have Gloria Steinem here. She's like a leader of this feminist movement, and she's demanding, you know, and now she's getting interviewed by Walter Cronkite. Now she's the face of it. Now you've hijacked. Now you've controlled the entire movement. She is now has a, uh, she now has street cred with everybody trying to do what she's doing. Uh, Greta Thunberg. Yeah, exactly. That's exactly how I feel like they use Greta Thunberg. Who the fuck was she? Just got interviewed by a couple people, and all of a sudden percent. she's the face. She's the face of global warming, whatever the fuck she's One hundred percent. I like that you brought up NASA because something that people overlook is that um, what is referred to as the Babylon bunch came up with the NASA, Babylon so- bunch. Like Not to be confused that. with the Brady Bunch. These are <laughs> completely different assholes. So it was like um, Walt Disney and Warner Von Braun and L. Ron Hubbard. And they, they come together and they are forming NASA. But someone else that Warner Von Braun is besties with besides Walt Disney is actually Stanley Kubrick. And I do a lot of research on Stanley Kubrick. One of my favorite movies of all time is The Shining. I actually have like a little poster behind me that says, like, come visit the Overlook. I love Stanley Kubrick's work, but there's so much in The Shining that kind of leads you to believe that he was giving us hints about Apollo and the fake moon landing. And when you find out that he was besties with Warner Von Braun, it makes a shit ton of sense. But even on top of that, who does he have starring in the film? Jack Nicholson, who is living in the Laurel Canyon with all of these other fucking military assholes And he legitimately is, Jack Nicholson is hanging out with like Roman Polanski who made Mary's baby all about satanic devil worshipers. And Jack Nicholson also, um, he thought that his mom was his sister and his grandma was his mother, just like Ted Bundy. And there is no one who has ever been able to find an official birth certificate for Jack Nicholson, which is also really interesting. Um, but it all ties back in together. 
And it's just too much to even say in one episode, but I'm telling you, you guys, if you find one layer, it's like a five layer burrito, if you will. Dude, and, you, you had to do something to get those seats to the lake. I mean, they don't just well, give those. I, I mean, like if you, if there's a, there's this guy, I keep begging him to come on the show. He's called the 400 pound entertainment lawyer. Oh, and, that would be great. And he, from, uh, what's that website called? Uh, Day, crazy, crazy days, days and nights. And nights. Yeah. I'm begging this guy to come on. Is he is he interested? Like what's I, he never gets back to oh, me really? okay. because he's got some really interesting stuff. And one of the things is that he said that if he names you, means he has proof of it, right? So he he names that uh, um, Robert De Niro pays for all of Roman Polanski's lawyer fees. Because he feels guilty because he sent Robin Polanski and that girl to Jack's house to do where the assault happens. Where the, where, you know, and he feels bad for it. So he pays for all of his legal bills. That's crazy. You know, and it's like everyone seems to forget that Robert De Niro got sneered in, uh, caught up in a pedophile bust in Europe. Allegedly. Yeah, and everyone just dismissed that. I heard that. But it's like, you know, it's like when, it, when, and then you get into, you want to bring up Stanley Kubrick, like he puts out Eyes Wide Shut, he dies right after he's, uh, he's done making it. Mm-hmm. They, they're all, they're all in on it, dude. They're all I in mean, on it. I mean, speaking of Roman Polanski, have you ever watched a movie called The Ninth Gate? Have you seen no, it, Johnny? You're, it. you're a nerd the dork. Gate? No, I've never heard of it. I'm a horror movie enthusiast. I talk a lot about stuff like this on my show. I love decoding horror movies, but Roman oh, no, Polanski. I have seen this. Yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, I have with seen Johnny this. Depp, yeah, with right? Johnny Depp, right? Yeah, yeah, totally. Mm-hmm. So there's this whole scene where they have this uh, Book of the Dead kind of. It was supposedly written by the devil himself, and they're all naked and they're wearing black robes. And it's in an eyes wide shut type of mansion ballroom and they're chanting and they're it's like, how much more do you need for these people to just come out and say, like, this is what we're doing. Enjoy. I agree, man. I was just looking at that poster. I'm like. They present it as like, oh, this is spooky. But man, I'm telling you. This is how they do it. They get it in your head. They get it in your head. They You start consuming it. You start to open your mind to it. And, you know, so I'm a big fan of uh, the Innocence Whoa. Project, right? This is an image That's from, it. From Ooh, that. thank you so much for that. That is the, a scene from The Ninth Gate. And, of course, Johnny Depp is the star. And Johnny Depp is infamous best friends with like Marilyn Manson and Damian Eccles, who was involved in the uh, wow. West Memphis Three murders. And there is this sacrificial tone that runs through all of these people. And you almost wonder if this is not by design. Yeah. Yeah, I'm with you on that. And like, so this whole thing right now too is that they are uh, pu- there's a real push to make everybody think the West Memphis Three didn't do it. Like, there's a real push right now. And people that I love, the Instance Project, has now come out and backed that shit. And like, well, that's completely wrong. And Damian Eccles has actually admitted from his own mouth that he did it. On three separate occasions. Okay, tell me about it. Well, he said, like, now that he has, uh, like, the double jeopardy or whatever, he's already been tried for it, so they can't do anything to him. He said, like, yeah, I did it, so what? Like, three times he said that out of his own mouth. Do you know when? No, I mean, I think that one of them was recently. I covered this with William Ramsey. Uh, I don't know if you guys are familiar yeah, with him, that's but who, uh, we we love William Ramsey. He's been on our show a bunch of times, and he's been really pushing hard on Twitter that the Instance Project is full of shit on this one, and it kind of makes me sad. Like, yeah, right there, uh, if you look at William Ramsey, 
He's been, go- I don't know if it's right there, but he's really been going off on this shit. Mm-hmm. And, and- I did an episode with him about it, and he was talking about how uh, there were specific details of the crime scene that were never released to the public, but somehow Damien Eccles knew intimate details and when he was questioned about it he would make little statements and say things that he shouldn't know and for me if you're not even a conspiracy theorist that's an admission of guilt you know something that you shouldn't know and how do you know it if it wasn't you yeah yeah, I'm with you, man. So it becomes this thing like... Do you think they're just wrong? Do you think they're not look? Do you think they're behind it? Well, I, I would there? like to have um, William Ramsey on because he's been talking about a lot of the problems with the Innocence Project. So I, I have been supporting the Innocence Project for a long time now. Ever since my daughters were born, I've been giving them monthly... Things because, you know, I think uh, we all saw that doc on, uh, I think, Netflix. Here we go with Netflix again. And where, you know, people were like, they got people off that were, like, innocent. And it's like, okay. Because, I I mean, I would rather, I would rather a a million guilty men do life in prison than one innocent man be, like, put to death. Yeah. Because, falsely convicted yeah mm-hmm. so that's who i am that's how i roll and i would rather help those people and i think that i think innocence project airs on that side too i think that's why they you know maybe are in on this west memphis three thing is because they that's their mo you know is to you air know, on the side uh, of- you know so like I, you know some but people- it's like why was it when damien eccles was released like the first thing he did was meet up with Johnny Depp and they both went and got like Luciferian tattoos together. No, I'm with you, man. I mean, it's it's just like for me, there's too much there. And, and just to lay any doubt in anyone's mind about it, you shouldn't just listen to like a three minute thing of me talking. You really should just go listen to like William Ramsey, break this thing down because when you get done with the episode, if you're not convinced, you'll never be convinced. Like he lays everything out in a very nice, neat and precise timeline, which I can't remember right now. Cause I'm just like repeating what I can um, think of, but it does make sense that this was a real, a ritualistic type of murder. And Damien Eccles admits that he's heavily involved with the occult. Yeah, I I, I agree with that. I, I I mean, like, the more... I remember when it came out, and I was like, this is wrong! And then, like, you watch that whole story, and, like, they just throw that one guy under the bus. I think the stepdad, they throw him under the bus. Mm-hmm. And then they start to get into making a murder. Are they doing the exact same thing to anybody else? trying to, th- Or is Stephen Avery guilty or is he innocent i don't know man i mean they've they they lied about the first case so you automatically assume that they're capable of the second especially with all the money that was on the line i mean oh, he was dude. gonna bankrupt that county dude they no were, he's they gonna were done. bankrupt the state of yeah, wisconsin maybe the whole state. yeah i mean it, how they owed him so much money dude like and, dude wouldn't you move out of state I can I mean I can see that but now I'm thinking about people like my parents. No, they don't the move. Kind, what it would take for them to move would be um, just monumental. The, the the land would have to be scorched for them to move off but of that. But dude, block. you literally went to jail for a rape you didn't commit. I mean I am just I I'm imagining well, And then who who would commit one once you got money coming in the and on the way? Like I, mean, I mean, I mean, unless he's a Unless he is a rapist, well, yeah. If he's it's not like a psychopath. Or he's just an idiot. But, I mean, he's a but, real but idiot. It, not, idiots don't even. I mean, that, that's not a qualification for being a rapist. You have to be a, no, no, an evil no. person, like a no, no. Hazard. I mean, like you're an idiot for not moving. I mean, yeah. my oh, 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 yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, no, he's not a smart guy. I mean, come on. Yeah, I want to go to WrestleMania. I mean, like that poor kid. <laughs> what is? I mean, uh, so let's let's. He's the one I feel the worst. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Damien. Uh, we need to Dassey, do another one on the Dassey. West Memphis Three for sure, because you know, I I kind of when Duncan had him on. His his yeah. his uh, animation, which was, yeah, which he's was, had him on his podcast a few times too. Yeah, and I just gotta be like, it's very weird, isn't it? Yeah. Isn't it weird how like 
how some things are acceptable, some things aren't. What do you mean? Like the occult is kind of mainstream? Well, it's like, like how many people will have like uh, Damien Eccles on their podcast, but wouldn't have Chris Lee on their podcast, yeah. right? It's yeah, I like, mean, they think he's innocent. They, they think he was wrongly convicted and that he he's... He's a victim, uh, is what they. Uh, that's it's why. It's super interesting how some things are are off limits and some things aren't. You know, it's like, yeah. you know, if no, I right. if I have a super unpolitically incorrect joke, you know, I, I'm excommunicated. But if someone does a pedophile joke, it's like, ah, oh, it's so edgy. <laughs> it's just such an edgy person. It's just like it's <laughs> it's it's really interesting. So. You know, as we, we move out of the 60s, we move to the 70s, you know, and then we get into, like, my generation, which is the 80s, and I thought the late 80s mu music was, like, really the last... Like, there's great music now, like, but it's more indie. I feel like Spotify will help you find all these bands you've never heard of. I'm like, God damn, there's so many good bands out there. But, you know, we look at that time where, like, okay... Where, like, in the late 80s, early 90s, when did Clinton come in as president? 92? 92. Right, I think. Right? When does NWA come in? Uh, Let me see. Just a second. Sorry. Um, 1987 mm -hmm. was their first year. Active. Okay. So 86, we, 87. So we're like still into the, uh, the George Bush presidency, right? Like... And what he represents and this kind of movement now to like push NWA. Just think about the name NWA. Like, like think about that. Like, I remember thinking, oh man, they just own that word. But then I think about what are they promoting? And just think about violence, what, violence drug dealing, gang banging. And at the same time, what, what do they have? Three strike rule. And having an attitude. Yeah, and, uh, <laughs> and they're pushing an attitude. It's fucking ridiculous. But you get into like, like I mean, we want to talk about LARPs. I mean, is there any bigger LARP than Ice Cube? I mean, that guy literally plays a role. Like, he walks around like he's a gangbanger, and he's not in any way. He really is Larry the Cable Guy of hip-hop. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. I mean, look, look at him with those Jerry curls there. I, I love that was my favorite era of Ice Cube when he had the Jerry curls. Oh well, They're dude, so because great. that was like NWA time, and they were so good. But like, think about what they represent, and like, you listen to people talk about what that band did to black culture, annihilated it. Because before that was uh, Run DMC. A and tribe there was, called yeah. Quest, Run DMC. It was a whole different vibe. Well, you know, a Will, a Will Fresh Prince. <laughs> to, you know, to, uh, uh, what's his name? Uh, LL, cool LL Cool J? Cool, yeah. Like, that was all, like, empowering shit. And then comes this dark, dark, dark gangbang shooting shit by people that didn't live that life. But that life was going on, though. They didn't live it, but Dude, it was. Talk to rappers. They go, the game changed. You can find interviews. It happened with Grunge, too, around that same time. Like she was, uh, uh, I think, was going to bring up, right? It, uh, with Cobain and everything. He, they just kind of washed away the big hair 80s of music and brought in this really negative, dark, uh, you know, somber. You like, guys just, should uh, have heavy. on um, Professor Griff. We have uh, him on. We you have? have? Okay, so you guys already know, like, that whole thing was like. If you're not willing to pay the fiddler, you can fuck right off. Like they, there was definitely some dues that had to be paid in order for people like um, Will Smith to have the status that he does. Yeah, I, I, well, and now we get into like and Jay Z. Oh yeah, well, it's like how you know we have we have Dr. Dre, we have we have Dr. Dre. We have Will Smith, we have Jamie Foxx, and, and uh, is that, I mean, that like, with all this uh, dark, like, what we would say, like, uh, 
there's a lot of homosexual undertones uh, or discussions or like that there, mm-hmm. that there's a lot of Tupac. There was a discussion about Tupac. Do not say that in front of Mike Tyson. He'll fucking beat the shit out of you. But like there's all this stuff about like why do they do that? And you know, and this is my big part of like why I don't I, I'm not part of this truth community that demonizes homosexuality because I think when you do that, you allow for blackmail to happen. Right? Yeah. And we're talking consenting adults. I I, I demonize obviously pedophilia because you're hurting people. And we should be outing all those scumbags. But when you when you create something which people don't want to admit they are to everybody, then then you're you're allowed to control and blackmail them. And that's exactly what they do. They they put these people in positions of power, and they again they co op movements. But it's not working as much anymore. What do you mean? Like being gay. Like it is, but not as much anymore. Well, that's and that's why they go on. to pedophilia. That's why they yeah. keep bumping it up. Like, yeah. okay, then let's let's see where we take it. Yeah, one hundred percent. It's like they have to have some level of the corruption of innocence. And I talk a lot about spirituality on my podcast as well because um, I'm too lazy to do a zero. <laughs> Sam, like, I don't know how I can keep up with all these shows, but I try to just mix everything in on my one show that I have. And I really have just come back to if you get involved in conspiracies at some point, you will understand that this is a race in a battle for the souls of mankind. And it's a battle that's been going on since the beginning of time. Uh, with good versus evil. And I've done a lot of research on the Nephilim and the descendants of the Nephilim. And I think that they're very much still alive in a presence in the world today. And people need to wake up real fast that this isn't about politics or anything like that. This is literally good versus evil. And they're racing towards the same finish line. And they're, they know like the outcome, but they think that if they can take as many people down with them as they can, that they've accomplished something in some way. I completely agree with you. And again, we talk about this all the time. What this really goes back to is the fallen, the watchers, the archons. Mm -hmm. And and when you talk Nephilim, you're talking fallen, you're talking fallen angels from God. And it's like, somebody put this out, like, uh, you know, um, gay pride month and then you like you go all the way down it's like it's to like demon right you know at the if you take pride month you put it together it, it it spells deep now i personally don't care what adults do with other adults you want to have gay pride go have a great time i don't care it's not my business i just don't get it what are well, we proud what are we proud of like what, what, what are we proud of what are they proud of well, you know what's so funny is like again where it begins and what it is, right? Because they're you know, like like they were proud they they had rights that they got rights. No, but they they were just like, hey man, we got to support each other. Now we can get in a discussion about that, but you know, I'm sorry, I'm just not going to demonize a, a group of people. No, I'm with you. You know, I'm have just have your not. parades, do whatever, just don't make anybody else do it. That's all I'm saying. No, that's what yeah. I'm talking about. Then it gets co-opted into queer theory. That's what yes. always happens. Yeah. It goes from civil rights to BLM. And then anybody who won't dress up in rainbow gear at their school or whatever becomes a, a villain. And then you just have these people who their whole life have been conforming to authority. That is mostly what the dean's list that's, or the, the principal's list at school is. That's where it begins. You are conforming to authority and you get rewarded for it. So, of course, when they get to the highest levels or they get to their job, they c- continue to conform to authority. Now, I don't think that the pushing of queer theory is, or these these queer theory pushing teachers are as prevalent as people want to think. I'm not saying it's not happening. I think you're right. Yeah, I think you're right. I just think these, the uh, you want to get into who is who? Look up the, look, you know, you know, Adam Green and I don't agree on everything, but he brought up that the woman who 
is behind libs of TikTok, has very deep, deep connections to uh, 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 legacy media. And you're like, oh, this, this, yeah. this, this Twitter account just exploded out of nowhere? Or are we talking about what we just talked about today? All of a sudden, now everybody, the media is talking about libs of TikTok. Oh, the media, now all of a sudden, it, it means something. Because the gatekeepers have allowed this person into the highest levels. I mean, I had just brought it up about, uh, and Johnny said something I couldn't believe that. I don't know if you heard, but in Massachusetts, there's this middle schooler where they had a, they would convince yeah. all the kids to yeah. wear a bride parade. And the yeah. bride said, that the kids got together, made a whole little clan, yeah. Yeah. and they ended up wearing black and red, white and blue, and they started saying their pronouns were USA. Yeah, USA. And I thought that was crazy, but when Johnny said it, it's like, the kids shouldn't have to gather up together and yeah. do this. This should this should be yeah, it's not a, it's not an issue that, that should face real? a child. Then you get into is know. that real? Well, even even that though disturbs me. I don't want children in the jingoism. I don't want them wearing flags and talking, you know what I mean? Cuz that's the kind of brain that gets you drafted, I mean gets you joining the military right out of high school and going and shooting people with with pleasure. But what, then, are you, what are you looking at there? What is it? Uh, no, it was just uh the pride thing. But but what I was saying, but then this goes back who do you think got a phone call from all those kids? What do you mean? Oh, and this goes back to the parents. This goes back to the family. The kids are acting like this because they're probably homophobic at home. Yeah, 100. But I don't think it's working, dude. I think people... What's well, not working? You know, I, I just think... I, I, I think you're going to start seeing people... Not, I, like, so everyone's like, you know, white people, they don't have an N-word. Well, they do. It's called uh, being called racist, right? <laughs> Like, you know, and like, if you get called racist, you're like, oh, no! you're like, you're on fire. <laughs> there was that time, you know? <laughs> and I just think that time is coming to an end that people are kind of over. And, and you see them do with the term anti-Semitic. Depends like, on whose calls you it, I would say. Like if somebody you, you know, give a shit about, but if it's just one of these random like who? insane liberals, I don't know, your mother. No, <laughs> I know. couldn't care. My mother really literally did. called me. A whack job about when I was like, <laughs> Are you serious? Push, oh, she's like, please stop. That's so funny. Please stop. You're, 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 people are asking me about what you're saying. I go, Mom, sorry. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. That's I got a lecture from my mother and my brother. This is during and now my funny. brother's like, uh, you know, but what's that mean? What, what's that? Well, he was like, uh, he's like, Maybe you know, I, I think we all realized daddy was right. <laughs> what, your daddy in the situation? <laughs> I'm dad. <Yeah>. Okay. <laughs> With his mom in the in the conversation, he's still daddy. Yeah. Well, okay. <laughs> I didn't do that math, XG. <laughs> That's why Johnny asked you. But the <laughs> point was, I was right. That's the point of it. But I don't even know if that pride story, that story's right. How do we know? Yeah, we don't. Just we, some stupid article on Fox. Obviously, Fox is the and one then, pushing it. Yeah. And then you just now the other side's running crazy. Yeah. Now they're saying this because fucking middle schoolers are homophobic. Because the truth is what Johnny said. They shouldn't have to do any of that. Yeah. Right? It's not a question that should be facing a child. Yeah, I totally agree with that. You know? That's but why it, the whole thing's a mistake. Because it's just then they have to deal with, they have to wrestle with this issue for themselves, which is a very adult thing. We can't even discuss it without flying into, you know, antics uh, as adults. Yeah. So why should a child be faced with these kinds of questions? Well, I mean, like anybody who, who thinks that is like a, a selfish prick. Yeah, and, and often they don't have children and often don't even seem to uh, have any in their family i mean it's it's crazy yeah you notice how often these teachers are just like loners you know total loners no and, that was the whole thing with the with the glendale situation was that they found people that were in antifa didn't have children they were fighting for of course they don't. The, the this 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 queer theory to be taught they don't even have kids and they're obviously and, not straight so they're not going to so have I, kids. i know and some of them were pedophiles that's why like they they what they were like uh, they were arrested for sex with minors. The guy oh, was there with a knife. He had a he had a rap sheet. Hmm. Like like the, like the Kyle Rittenhouse. How, those people were some of those people were pedophiles. They're yeah, just... he shot and killed the pedophile. What were you saying? Oops. Who me? Yeah, you were about to say something, Julia. No, I said that was gross. That yeah. they, yeah. their um their maps. <laughs> Quote unquote, we have a politically correct oh, yeah. room oh, for it now. Ridiculous. No, it's so funny. It's like, oh, I'm a map. It's like, get the fuck out of here.
What do you think? Do you think now if you listen to people, uh, you know, who are in the field of, of psychology, they will tell you that I know where you're going. Some people are genetically inclined for whatever reasons through I mean maybe through uh environment to uh to be attracted to children. What I just I can't I find that difficult to accept. I don't accept that. Yeah. I do find that we have created a number called 18, right? Mm -hmm. Because We've kind of done studying. And like, if you go back, everyone's like, we need to get back to all oh, conservative values. Well, uh, how, how conservative yeah. do you want to be? Jerry Lee Lewis marrying his 13 year old right? cousin. I mean, yeah. like in the 1800s, you could marry a 14 year old. Yeah. But we've done studies that 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 age, you are not mentally capable of making proper decisions. So we said 18. and 1800. I, I mean, Jerry Lee Lewis married his 13 year old cousin yeah. in the 19, right. what, 50s? Right. Or right. Right, it's right, legal. right. So my whole point in this is that uh, that even if there is something that maybe is like wired in the DNA, which it, or or just our, our our hardware, which is when a female is ready to have children, that's when they're ready. We know as a society over time that that's not correct, and that they haven't. Well, mentally. physically ready is different than mentally. Yeah, right. that's yeah. what I'm trying yeah. to say. Yeah. The that we need a certain age that they are mature enough to make decisions. And like you know, we you know when I did the Naughty Show and we would inter interview we would interview adult film stars, they you would go, do you think 18's okay? And they would say, no, I think it should be older. Older. Because they would look back and they would go, I was not mentally ready for that. But for some reason, society has said 18, and I think we would agree on that. Yeah, it is interesting that I, it, it does present but my, challenges. But the point like of this rant, the, this, this rant is that even though deep in your wiring, it's your wiring may say uh, biologically that Ed, someone at this age is ready, it's not. And we have now created a rule that says you have to wait. Yeah. So even if you are predisposed to that, we have a we have a rule that says no. But I don't even think what they're talking that. about is that, Sam. I mean, they're not talking about like people who are of age. You know, I mean, that that have you know passed through puberty. Yeah, they're talking about younger than that. Yeah, a lot well, of these. Yeah, people. those. Well, well, Johnny, the problem I have with that discussion as well, even on top of what I've already said, is that there are people who are predisposed to murdering people and we don't go well let's should we should we, well, we work with them disposition but i think they're i think that w they've just disguised evil with a different with a different word yeah you know? i mean yeah with, with different for words. sure for because, sure because i mean i i've heard it said and i'm curious your take on this that w that uh, someone i can't remember who was saying this but the people who are real heroes are these people who are attracted to children and never do anything their whole lives what do you think about that? What do you think about that idea? I, I don't think I, I think that's the worst use of heroes. Yeah, in my it's crazy, yeah. right? Yeah. It's like so stupid. I can't remember where I saw this it. Guy, it was, uh, what are we gonna give out purple hearts? It was one of these guys that does, is like a, a, a psychologist who studies this, and yeah. he was like, you know, the real brave. He said bravery or courage or something like that are these people who, and I'm like, what? What There's are we talking about? Brave about that? No, no. And, and, you know, it's just like, okay, how many times you've been like going in and you're like, your body's like, oh, look at her. You go, oh my God, I don't even know if she's 18. What the fuck? That's, you know, it's like you catch yourself and you're like, we don't do that. Yeah. Or, you There's know, nothing brave about that. Maybe I, I'm pissed off that Target wants to charge me $20 for, you know, a, a fucking uh, ice, a Ben and Jerry's ice cream. They're so expensive. Yeah. At, at, at I don't just start I don't punching take people. It. Well, I don't take it. Yeah. I don't steal it. Yeah. I'm a hero, I guess. Yeah. yeah I well, want to. When you and your buddies are at the beach and so, uh, some, overdeveloped kid is there and you're like oh dude i, I didn't want to bang that high five on bravery <laughs> isn't that crazy it's so stupid i thought that was so funny i'm so tired of these academics acting like that's okay like they make up these terms to explain shit away i really do think it's so, evil though that sometimes they're, they're just scumbags they doesn't need to we don't need to have a term to to uh Protect them from how how stupid they are. And their response to that is that this kind of attitude that we have is the reason that people like that don't come forward for help, is because they're afraid of being, uh, you know, ostracized and what and, help and would you get? Well, well th therapy or something. Well, it's like, like I have a problem with drugs and alcohol. Well, he, what these people are like, That's they have nowhere saying. to go to. I That's don't know what, what to saying. tell you.
I don't know, but then it gets to that weird where they're going to do VR with kids. It's, well, no, it's, dude. Yeah, is, no. Uh, what about the oh, a rapist who die, has these urges to rape and he doesn't rape? Is he brave? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's ridiculous. It's evil. He it is evil. You know? I mean, go to a fucking sex uh, sex ed uh, or sex anonymous meeting and make up a uh, something you're attracted to, but, but work on it. But I, I I don't know what to tell you, man, because it's just like this is my whole thing with uh, with Hollywood and this pushing of the Me Too movement and these microaggressions of male toxicity. But they're all fine with dudes dressed like truck stop hookers, gyrating in front of children. It's like, no, man, we all, I listen, dude, I do recovery. I can't accept, like, good luck going a share without somebody talking about what happened to them as kids. Good luck. Good luck. Is there anything else you want to talk about, Julia? I feel like <laughs> we just yelled at each other while you sat there quietly. No, that's okay. I Like I said, I... Listen to Tinfoil Hat for years before I started my own podcast. And those are some of the best moments <laughs> when you guys are just screaming at each other. <laughs> yeah. So hold on. So let's end up, let's end on this. Tell me about is Mountain Mountain Laboratory. Is that is that the uh the the house we talked about, the log cabin? The no, so the Lookout Mountain Laboratory is actually a, a totally separate location in the laurel canyon um it's on lookout mountain avenue of course but uh this is a secret facility that they claim processed atomic bomb footage this is the place that jared leto owns that i was trying to think of. oh okay this is the place that he owns on the hill yeah yeah he owns this old yeah. air force station lookout there. mountain laboratory yeah yeah he owns so it. hold on you were about to say something that was going to shift my paradigm the way I think. Oh, well, so they it actually has an electrified fence around it. It has um, a basement with like room, um, sorry, like temperature control vaults and stuff like that. And they actually found out that this Lookout Mountain Laboratory is responsible for 19,000 classified motion pictures. Mm. And you had to have top security clearance in order to enter the facility. And um, yeah, so it says it's like blast measurement group. If you look at this photo right here and they said that they only processed uh, atomic bomb footage. But I think that they were doing way more than they claim to be because like Marilyn Monroe had top security clearance in order to get into this thing. Um, presidents and no one really knows what 19,000 classified motion pictures were made there. But it's oh. like Kenneth Anger also had clearance to work at this place. And he's the one who made like Lucifer Rising and all those weird movies from the 60s. So these and, are all done in this place. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. So I thought it was really interesting and I couldn't find a whole lot more on it, but I ended up interviewing this doctor. Her name is Dr. Juliet Engel, and she claims that she was a survivor of this sex magic program, this MK ultra esque type program that she lived in for most of her life. And she asked me if I was familiar with a place called Lookout Mountain Laboratory. And I said, actually, yes, Juliet, I'm very familiar with it. Uh, do you know anything about it? And she said, well, that's where they would take the kids to make snuff films. Oh, so when you God. find out that they made 19,000 classified motion pictures at this place and then you hear from someone like dr engel saying that this is where they made the snuff films oh, and she had no idea God. i had already been looking into it and it was one of those aha moments that you realize this is why they're classified this is why you can't find out what they are or what was going on in there um this is why and now jared leto owns this place yeah, that's Crazy. not good. So, 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 I, 
So I, w- I wonder if like this is where they made all those fake nuclear bomb videos where they're like, "Oh my god, look at the look at the trees." They're I go- would say the probability is um highly likely to almost 100% yes. Oh my god. So this is just just like the moon landing. Mhm. Yeah. You can see this place from the from you know from Hollywood too. You can see it at the top of the hill. I can't believe they let somebody buy it. Yeah, well, I mean that tells you that who. Although I believe they it's been claim in that it's no while. longer in operation. They claim that it's been no longer in operation since maybe like the early eighties. But I do know somebody who works the, there or worked there. Oh, really? Like I mean, they were really? Jared Leto's assistant. Yeah, and they were in that building. And I mean, it's his house as far as. And what they say? I mean, they they have strict NDAs with that oh, guy. But I'm she sure. told me, but she was somebody I was kind of dating, and she told me that it, he's just a weirdo. But it was just a house, as far as she could tell. I mean, she never said anything weird about the building itself, as I recall. Now there were places that were off limits, and in the, in the, of I'll say that. Of course, I was gonna say there has to be something because if you read the description of this place, they almost had like subterranean chambers and like big. Uh, like statues and like ziggurats, like what you would see in Babylon underneath that thing. Yeah, it's kind of like it was like a ritualistic. It's nuts. He purchased it in 2015 for $5 million. What's that? He purchased it in 2015 for $5 million. I mean, but, but the perfect spot. Yeah, to make fucking fake videos. You're right down to right down there from Hollywood. Shady yeah, shit it you was a rehab do. before that. And as of November 2012, the former Air Force film studio and laboratory had been leased by 180 Center, a rehab center, which, according to uh, broker slash blogger Jimmy Byan, uh, will be used to house up to 18 residents at a time who will dish out fifty thousand dollars per month to live and recover in this historic dude. Treasure. How then, rich? Then Leto a, bought it. Man, that. what kind of drug act are you that you can afford fifty grand to go to rehab? Apparently nobody, because they they close it down. Yeah. What I'm think what I'm thinking now is like, do you think they have a new laboratory like this that's making all the? I'm all, sure all the alien videos that are coming out right now. All the I'm UFO sure. videos. I mean, I'm sure this place when they built it was a lot more hidden than it is now. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it was there. Nobody was living up there, and and now I mean that's that's in the middle of the desert, underground somewhere. Mm-hmm. So the, the crazy, operation. dude. That's so nuts. That is nuts. That's that's nuts. That's nuts, dude. Man, I just. I bought it in 94 for $750,000. That's why, like, it's like, it's just so crazy to me, dude, that, like, all these comics and all these people that just don't understand why, why people have major problems with pedophile jokes. And listen, I'll defend your right to do pedophile jokes. I have to. I can't pick and choose where I want to apply freedom of speech and. And freedom of expression. I, if I don't want to be cens- censored, I can't censor people. Okay? I can't do it. I can't do it. But there is... The, well, people don't understand what is being done. What is happening to the most defenseless people in the world. There's nobody more defenseless than children. They can't do anything. They're tiny. They're at the whim. That's why if you get the wrong parent, your fucking life is hard, you know? And they, like punching up, punching down, there's no bigger punching down than than uh, making fun of a child getting sexually exploited. There's no bigger punching down. It's fucking wrong. And I'm not a, I like, I had somebody the other day talking about, pu- stop being a Puritan. It's like, they didn't call me it. They were talking in general, but it's like, like not wanting to teach children queer theory and not wanting to teach children. It's okay. Not to listen to your parents. Okay. You don't know history. Let's even take that. The, 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 uh, you know, Oh, you just hate it. Let's just take all that out. The homophobia. You think, take that all out. And let's just look at what the government did to the indigenous. They literally took the kids from their parents and brought them somewhere else and didn't allow the, ch- the parents to teach the children. They disconnected generations. 
That's done on purpose. If you study what they did, you want to get into Taria? Orphan trains? Whoa, whoa. Taking these these kids? Oh, from- you know what? You froze on. Are you there? There you are. Okay. Did you know that actually Walt Disney? You're here. You're oh, back. Oh, sorry. You're back. I was going to say, did you know actually Walt Disney? And his father, like, worked the Chicago's World's Fairs, like, and worked with the orphan trains. Whoa. Wait, what? Johnny doesn't believe in any of that. With the World's Fairs things being well, old, Johnny, old built. No, wait, hold on. Johnny doesn't believe that the Chicago World's Fair was the destruction of some grand city. That okay, That's Johnny. what I don't believe. Okay. Johnny's not a believer. That the World's Fair, no, because yeah. because people would have seen that. I mean, there's a, millions of people living in those cities. Okay. There's pictures of it being built. Don't mind us. Don't mind us. Don't mind us. Me and Julia are having a cool conversation about Tataria. No, okay. don't, don't mind us. Don't mind us. <laughs> okay. Yeah, it's crazy, dude. And then Walt, Walt Disney, just a hard worker. No, that guy's a scumbag. John, Walt Disney's just a hard worker, and he just had these visions of entertaining children. It didn't matter that his dad worked on this thing with the, the Chicago Fair, the World Fair, which was just a giant New World Order thing. Don't well, don't mind that. Here we are again. Rich kids being plugged in. See, I think it's possible that the whole Tartaria angle is the way that they make the World's Fair, which possibly, I think, probably was nefarious. Disc- easily discounted, you know, like oh, they think it's Tartaria, but you know, oh, it makes it easier for other people to dismiss it. Dude, we're we're doing five D nine, we're doing ninety D chess right now, ninety D. It's crazy, Julia. That's crazy. I did not know that, man. That's crazy. I did not know that Walt Disney's dad. Walt Disney is the greatest example of a dude who sold to us one way, and he's completely the opposite. He is a scumbag. Hey, Sam, who do you want to fight from history? Line me up, Walt Disney. And what's funny is he'd be turning in his grave right now if he'd show up to, to his Disneyland right now. No, he wouldn't. He'd be like, oh, my God, it's all working out the way I wanted to. He wanted all that shit. Dang, what up? Walt Disney was a pedo. He um, was actually in the Day Malay, and he yeah. was... Um, Somehow involved with the Red Cross, which are connected to the Knights Templars. And I think that he'd be very impressed with how things have turned out. Yeah. yeah. he He's a scumbag. I've told you that I know somebody. I, I, I know somebody knows somebody. But literally, that was like they saw him in some movies that are very fucking disgusting. Disney? Yeah. Interesting. Thirty threes all over Walt Disney allegedly. Oh, well, Club Thirty Three. That's that's yeah. That's known. Allegedly the movie thing. Allegedly, oh, but I'm telling you, bro, shady shit, dude. Shady shit. Julia, you crushed it. Great show today. You know, I've always said this, man. I just like you can just sense when someone's gonna do big things. And I think you have a very bright future, and uh, I think people need to check out your podcast. Because you're doing big things. So one more time. Please tell them where they can find you. Thank you. Please tell them where they can find you. Um, so I don't know if I'm frozen, but I feel like I'm... I, I think I'm frozen. No, we can see you. We can hear you. Oh, maybe we're... Oh, fine. okay. Okay, go on. Yeah, we can, we, can, we can hear and see you. Okay. So um, I have the Cosmic Peach podcast. I'm Julia. You can find my podcast wherever it is that you're listening to podcasts. So iHeartRadio, um, Apple, Spotify, sometimes on YouTube. And I would love for the listeners to know where they can go to get their minds blown. And that's the Cosmic Peach podcast. All right. Well, we appreciate you coming on. Great episode. Guys, again, check out uh, my dates. I got to get some of my other dates up. I have no dates. I I have no future dates up. I have some coming up. I'm going to be working on putting dates together. Daddy's going to go out and do it on his own. It is fine. 
back to the way we always been. Uh, so go to samtriplee.com. Again, check out all of our affiliates. We have those right there. And then please stay tuned for these uh, very funny sneak peeks or what we want to call them. Um, Johnny Johnny has a problem with the word sneak, the phrase sneak peek. Uh, they're just highlights. highlights. Okay, well, check out these highlights. They, these, these episodes are already out, though. You can watch them now. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Check out the highlights for a couple of my other shows and our good friend over here, Xavier Guerrero's We Don't Smoke the Same, which Word on the Street is crushing it on Patreon. Crushing it. Crushing it. So we're very excited for him. Check out the new shirts. New shirts all the time. We got stuff working oh, what's on. That all- spook- is that a new shirt? Spooky action? No, the spooky action. That's oh, it says new one. shirt there. That's- yeah. Well, it's an old shirt, but it's a good shirt. It's our... It's our Stranger Things shirt. All right, guys, enjoy these uh, highlights of some of the stuff, some of the episodes I've been putting out. Thank you guys so much for making this show, Conspiracy Social Club, and Broken Sim a top 200 comedy podcast. We love you guys very much. Enjoy the highlights. Here's a clip from the latest Broken Sim. Donut holes. Donut holes, bro. Donut holes. What did you just go full head there? Donut holes. What, what was that? Stop Why it. did you say it like that? Stop don't know. It. Stop. Is that it. from being around your kids? You're doing like kid voices. Is that what it is? Stop it. Okay, so I'm. I don't want to tell all the stories, dude. Because um, can I ask you one thing? Yeah. You got. You get comments a lot about why you don't curve the bill of your hat, and I would love for you to address that briefly. You get a lot of shit about. Yeah, it. I get a lot of shit, and it's because I like my hat this way. That's it. You just like the look. I just like the look. Like I, a hip-hop kind of like yeah, early I just Run like DMC it. thing. And I don't care if anybody likes it or not. And you also don't take the stickers off your hat. Yeah, I don't. I think it's funny. I went to see Garth Brooks in Vegas, and he doesn't take the stickers off well, his hat either. You're great minds think alike. Yeah, my girlfriend was so funny. She had no idea who Garth Brooks was. Isn't so, that crazy? How could you live your life in America and not know who Garth Brooks is? Dude, have you seen these videos where they ask college kids basic questions? Oh, it's a nightmare. And nobody knows them. And then I get really mad when I don't know the answer either. I get really <laughs> angry about that. I get really angry about it. Well, it's like also, Johnny, it's like I, I bet you they can't tell you where the Ukraine is, but they can explain to you genders, right? It's like they are saturated with dumb knowledge. Where are your priorities? Young people. Well, it's like Gen is it, Z, which Sam is says it, is going to save us. Uh, is it their fault or is it their parents' fault? Well, I don't think fault is is even in question here. It's it's just we got. What can we do about it? I want to throw this in real quick. It's not news, so I didn't save it for later. Isaac Weisip, uh, friend of the show, posted this video. Did you see this? No. Of this guy on this news. Yeah, like, well, it doesn't because news American show. farm income is going to go up. It's- and he hisses. At the co-host, like a li- like a lizard person, just watch. It's gonna, be, the, it's gonna be a great thing. They for might the sell. They, they might the use it as an entry to, to exporting chicken to us, which would be you know. No, we, we will be exporting chicken to the Chinese. Can we, we buy exporting. a Chinese firm? No, not right now. Then why should they buy one of ours? Why not? Because we can't the, buy it, one of theirs. It's it's open up the market. Very good. Well. Well. Yes, we have we have capitalism and we embrace it. What was that? They and they don't Clarice. We have yes, we have. What is that, dude? That's so creepy. Isn't it weird? That is so creepy. Cool. Very, very well. Yes. We have, we have, we have, we have, we have. I'm telling you, bro. <laughs> they live, dude. That's weird. You guys dude. think I'm crazy? We can't it's, buy one of theirs. Open up the share market. market. We don't have to watch the game, but that isn't that weird. You think weird, I'm bro? crazy? <laughs> that was some weird shit, dude. Yeah, that gave dude, me the chills when I watched sure. that for the first time. For sure. For sure. Creepy. I'm starting to see the darkest shit on the front page. Like, dude, I logged in yesterday, and the first thing from an account I don't follow that I've never seen was a woman who just got hit by a bus oh, in so, New York. And yeah. Just, yeah, just her guts, I, like, I blocked on, it. I blocked it. Me too. That. I did it. I reported like, it. Why am I seeing it. this? On the front page? I mean, why am I seeing this? It's, I, what are they doing? There's something with the frequency, like you're always talking 100%. about. They're trying to lower it, right? One hundred percent. Because, dude, that set me. That set my day, whole day fucked up. Like, yeah, I like, didn't want to watch start. it. It's so got sad. Bad energy. I don't even know how that hit happened. Oh no, it's so weird. It was like a school teacher too, dude. Yeah, like I don't want to see school? it. Oh. Have you ever seen that video where the woman accidentally tries to beat the train, and she just gets? Annihilated, dude. Oh, no, no, yeah, no, no, nope, no, don't Google no, it. I'm not. I, I'm not. Okay, I'm so I'm Johnny, we got some calls, and here's a quick sneak peek of Conspiracy Social Club. Enjoy. Are you eating bacon in the show? God dang it, man! I'm on a 24 hour fast. It's so good, <laughs> just like this show. 
a smart animal had to die for you to snack on this show. I feel bad about it. You should. They're smarter than I, dogs. I love bacon so much. You're smarter than dogs. Yeah, and I feel bad for pigs. Yeah, I do too. But I try to eat organic bacon. I want what do you mean organic? Range. I want free roaming dogs. Oh, you want dogs. one that roamed and then got shot I'll and shoot a fucking pig in the face. You will. <laughs> yeah, I will. All right, guys, real quick before we're done, we want to tell you about all of our affiliates. It's a great way to support the show. Uh, as you know, uh, fiat money is chaos. Okay, fractional reserve banking, dangerous. The best way to get out of it is precious metals, in particular, silver and gold, silver and gold. And that's why we're working at Wise Wolf, okay? Wise Wolf, silver and gold. Just go to samtriplee.com or samtriplee.gold, and you could join. And uh, the, he's hooking you up. They got great pro. They, you can either buy a single time or you can sign up for their program where you can buy up to $500 a month. I'm doing it. I hope you can, too. We also have... Everybody at Eagle Research, that's right, Eagle Research, AquaCure Mobile Model AC50 Brown Gas, Hydrogen Brown Gas. Uh, the guy who makes it says it's a cure. People are using it. Check it out. Just go there, use the, the, the promo code Tin foil hat, three words, and get a discount. Go back to the main page, Sam Tripoli. You will get, uh, yeah, you get a discount with the promo code Tin foil. And then our good friends over at Haley Ray Crystal Shop Go to the, the promo code is Swarm, Swarm fifteen. 15. Get fifty percent off, off all your crystals, all your quartz, all uh, you name it. What do we got here? Look at all this stuff. All this stuff. All the best. You can do it right there. It's all part of the best crystal shop on the internet. Jewels, bracelets, clusters, you name it. Oh, look at that. Look at that. Candles. You name it. You got it. Swarm 15. Thank you for supporting the show. We love you. And uh, thank you so much for your support. Check out this clip from the latest Cash Daddies. Yeah, real, I mean, you just said it. The closest thing I can think of that re is relatable to gold is real estate because it's, you know, it's a land is a hard asset asset. Um, so, and, and, you know, over decades and decades, that's, that's one asset class that has performed very well is, is land or real estate. So. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's, the, it's the American dream was the house, right. And keeping up with inflation and, 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 you know, if you buy a house, I mean, you're make, making the, the system happy. It likes to create debt. You know, if you're if you're buying rent houses, that's good. That, that, that That's, again, if you cash out equity in your home, that's tax-free. There's all kinds of benefits to owning real estate above gold and silver. I just know, like, as just me as my savings and parking something and going liquid very fast, uh, metals are, are a, a great way to do that. Let me ask you something. How much do you think somebody should have in gold? If they, what's a good number to have? As you get ready for the complete collapse of the of the government, I mean of the dollar, is there a number? It just kind of depends on your budget. I mean, if you're, you know, if you're blue collar and you're you're working uh, your your nine to five and and you know trying to keep the lights on, then you're probably a silver person. You know, just get a little silver now and then. You can buy. I mean, a wolf pack would be a good idea for you. You can get a little bit every month on automatic and we, you get your silver quarters and dimes and half dollars and all that stuff. Um, but I think you should you should have a significant portion. I don't know what that number is. You'd probably want some, you know, uh, cash on hand as well. Um, I would just be real skeptical because I know from history, the, the major banks have a relationship to the Federal Reserve and the central bank that the regional banks do not have. As a matter of fact, uh, they're running the Fed Now system that comes out in July, which is ba basically a payment system across all banks, and they piggybacked it off of the majors, you know, uh, uh, Chase, you know, J.P. Morgan Chase, and Bank of America, et cetera. Um, the regional banks and the smaller banks are really getting hit right now, uh, and it behooves uh, the, the larger banks to buy them up and make them look weak. Um, so I, I'm skeptical of the banking system. Go deep, homeboys. Aaron, open your mind. Drink from the fountain of knowledge. There's lizard people everywhere. That's some interdimensional shit. Wake up, Aaron. This is only the beginning. There's 
You just blew my mind. Tim foil hack. Tim foil hack. Tim foil hack.